Tavana. Oh, I love our discussions and I'm really excited to dive into oh, sustainable businesses, like so simple and sustainable, right? And I know this is something I'm trying to create or in the process of creating. I wouldn't say that I am there yet because we're always going someplace. We're always <laughs> challenging ourselves. At least I am. Yeah. But tell me what you feel like is what is the definition of a simple and sustainable business for you? Well, I mean, I have to say, like, I'm going to also put another term in there. What I think about when I first read the book, The 4-Hour Work Week, mm -hmm. was exactly what he talked about, living anywhere, having a business that feeds my lifestyle rather mm -hmm. than living to feed the business. Mm -hmm. And so when I think of a simple, sustainable business, I also think of a term that I've been using lately called a boutique lifestyle business, where it we don't serve a zillion people. We serve yeah. a a few people very well yeah. in uh, maybe like a bespoke way or in small yeah. groups and things like that. And in our corner of the world, we get to make a difference and we get to make a good amount of money and have the lifestyle we want to live. And so for, that's what a simple, sustainable business, like even when you think of a boutique, mm -hmm. a boutique is bespoke. Usually when you go in there, they have one of each size. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to, they don't have so many things. Like when you go into Ross or TJ Maxx or something, those places give me anxiety, but <laughs> they just don't have a lot going on. Yeah. They have some really loyal customers. They, yeah. uh, they tend to have like prices that are, uh, they're not cheap. <laughs> They're not you know cheap. I mean? mm, yeah. They really focus on good quality and, and good customer service and loyalty yeah. Yeah. and just, and really curating the best of the best. And so I think if we think about business like that, it's going to be easy to create something simple when you don't have a lot going on, mm -hmm. it's easy. And when you don't have a lot going on, it's, more sustainable because most of us are running the businesses by ourselves. Yeah. And I think we get into the online world and we think it's got to be bigger and more and uh, like all of these things. And I'm like, but why? Yeah. But why? When you, when you add bigger and more, you add complexity that maybe you didn't sign up for, maybe you didn't want. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just really telling people as I, just had a birthday. I'm like, I'm stepping into my season of ease. I like and what that. does that look like? And what does that mean? And what does that feel yeah. like to me? And to me, it really centers around that boutique lifestyle. Yeah. The boutique lifestyle business. I have a big mission for sure, but that doesn't mean right now in this season, it has to be bigger and more. Mm. That's, it's really interesting. I love the idea of being that more bespoke simple and small, but mighty, small, but mighty with the actions that you're doing with those few clients. I've had some conversations though with people about the high ticket and this feels like high ticket, right? Versus the more, I guess, um, financially obtainable for those newbie kind of people or the people that are just haven't been in business forever and not making a lot of money, right? Those are usually the people that don't have a lot of money. They haven't been in business long in serving them at a lower price point and not trying to go high ticket. Like there's this dichotomy, right? And I think we can design businesses the way, whatever way we want. I want to leave that as a caveat. 100%. Whatever works for you and whatever feels like your values, go for it, right? But how do we balance the high ticket and who we're drawing in? And I guess I've had a few conversations recently where they're like, I don't want to charge high ticket. And if you're not charging high ticket, you have to have more people. Like, otherwise you're just drained. It's one or the other. It's, it's one, one or, or the other. other. It's it is. Low ticket and high volume or mm -hmm. mid, like let's add into the conversation mid to high ticket. Cause I think yeah. people automatically, like it's not an either or, I think it's a both yeah. and, and we have to, we have to learn to also look at, even if we yeah. don't live in the gray. Yeah. And so sure. 
there's also mid ticket and you get to decide what that means or looks like to you. And also as a master certified life coach, let's just go for a second and ask, why don't we want to charge whatever we think high ticket is or whatever we think mid ticket is not to say that you do it, but just to explore, like, first of all, what is the number? Cause sometimes we just Mm -hmm. say, Oh, high ticket. And somebody might say to me, high ticket is, I don't know, 5k. Yeah. And I took it. <laughs> right. And and a friend of mine and I was like, when we see 5K, it's like, oh, here you go. And then, but then it was like one of those mind moments of like, whoa, yeah. when did yeah. we get there? Because yeah. at one point, five ticket was like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. I got to breathe. I got to think <laughs> about this. I got to, you know, and so it's all relative. And so th- that's the first thing that I would ask mm-hmm. somebody. It's like, I don't want to charge high ticket. First of all, it's just define high ticket. Yeah. First of all, let's just find that for yep. yourself. Yep. Let's talk about why you don't want to charge that and what's coming up for you. You're the boss of your business. You always get to charge whatever you want to, but just like at least explore and understand why you're making a decision so mm-hmm. that you can feel good in it. And your decision is rooted in maybe the data and not the drama of it. Mm. Mm, so yeah. that's the first thing that I would say there. The second thing, when people tell me that they don't want to charge high ticket, it's like exactly what you said, Rachel. It's like, okay, are you, are you willing to play the high volume game then? Yeah. Yeah. And do you understand what that requires of you? And are you willing to do it? If you understand what it requires of you and you're willing to do it, then go be great. You have my blessing. But if not, like, because I don't know about you, Rachel, but I got bills to pay. And <laughs> yep. if, if we say, oh, I don't want to charge high ticket and you need, I don't know, uh, 5,000 is the number for today, $5,000 to live. And you're charging $97 a month. You need 500 more than actually 500 people Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. there to be able, not 500, is it 50? 50 people people. to be able to every single month, if you're charging $97 for a membership, for example, or if you charge $97 a session. So my question to people is always like, if you're having trouble getting clients now, Mm -hmm. do you want to go try to do that 50 times Mm -hmm. every month? Mm -hmm. Then it goes to a question of, okay, if we've already done the the math and we've done the mindset work on why don't we want to charge high tickets? Sometimes the reason why people don't want to charge high ticket is because they don't feel confident in the yes. services that they're providing. Yes. We of course are good people and we want we don't want to quote yeah. unquote take people's money, be yeah. shysters and scam artists. We want if people are going to pay us whatever the amount is, whether it's 97, 997, 9,997, we want to make sure that people get the results. So then you yeah. got to ask yourself, are you trying to sell something that is not in your wheelhouse? Mm. And maybe you go address that instead of the price, because I know people right now in today's market that are going out and buying cars, cars cost tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> I know people going and buying televisions that cost hundreds of dollars. So right. you can't tell me that people are not spending money and spending lots of it today yeah. when they see the value for the thing. So. And that's the thing is they have to see the value. And I think a lot of people, and I'm guilty of this in the past as well, of like, just trying to solve all of the problems and what ends up happening is you end up diluting the message because you're trying to like, well, it can solve this, this, and this. It just depends on the client or it can solve this, this, and this. Depend. It it ends up diluting things because you're trying to be all the things to the person and that person may not want you to be all the things. And you can't communicate clearly what the end result is if you're trying to solve all the problems. That's a lot of what I see. And usually when you try and solve all the problems, you're not confident in solving one problem, in one very specific problem. Right, or solving all the problems for all the people. It's like, I can do this for everybody and their mama and Sally Ann and Johnny Joe and all of these things. And I don't, it's been my experience personally and with clients is just like this fear we talk about scarcity, this fear if like I already am not getting what I think is enough clients. And if I narrow yeah. down, I'm definitely not going to have enough clients. And yeah. what I found is like the opposite is mm-hmm. true. 
And so the exact yeah. opposite is true. Exactly. You can you can speak yep. so much clearly when you just draw a line in the sand for your people. You say, yep. like, I I'm here for you. Yeah. Not everybody. I'm here for you because it's just like we were talking about with results. If you get really good at helping a specific person with that result, it's just like is is no comp it's no contest. It's like no yeah. confusion and no contest. That's yeah. what I like to say. Like totally. You, you gotta go to Rachel. If you're into human design and copywriting, go to Rachel. She's your girl. Yeah. Yeah. It creates a blue ocean, really, because you're so you're more specific. And I wanna say that for manifestors and many gens, they have a like almost have a heart attack when you start to go, wow, oh, I have to get specific in something. And this is something I've struggled with as a Manny Gen. Um, and I want to say that it's only a specific offer that you're getting super specific about. Like your overarching core messaging and the things that you want to do, the vision that you have as a manifester are can be really broad. It could be for as many people. Do you have an offer for them? Maybe, maybe not. But allowing your offers to be that specific point and not the like big overarching core message, if that makes sense. Well, yeah. and I also like when I'm working with many gens and the people that are multi-passionate, yeah. I also like, how about we just pick a person that has a lot of different problems that you mm -hmm. might love to solve. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. then that way, if we're talking, for example, women in midlife, Mm -hmm. They have a number of things that they could be dealing with. And you go go to town yep. to, to your heart's <laughs> desire on all of the different things yeah. and figure it out. But you're still specific in who you're working with. So that's another yeah. way that that I have found that gives the managers a lot of comfort. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. no, we're not putting you in a box or constraining your creativity. Yep. We're yeah. just saying, do all the things you love to do for your favorite like group of people. And then that way, everybody know that everybody in that group of people knows to come to you. And then you get to play mm -hmm. with all of the different things that you help them with. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So if you're creating a like bespoke business, I love this idea. Um, where, like, where does it start? Do you have an offer suite? Is it one offer? Like, what is, tell me more about how you look at creating this bespoke business? Okay. So first I have to say I'm a generator. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that out there. And I happen to have a ton of projectors. I get a ton yeah. of projectors and a lot of manifestors, but oh. it's only, yeah, uh, mostly projectors. Okay. Some manifestors and, and uh, some generators. But the way that I look at it is like, what's your signature solution? And so mm -hmm. I start with what I call the five P's. So who are your people? What is their problem or their problems? Um, what is the process that you're going to take them through to help them get from problem land to mm -hmm. promise land? And then how do you package and price this thing? Mm -hmm. And so those are, those are the five P's. And we start by looking at the people and their problem or problems, because if you know what their problem is, then you get to decide what's your solution to it. Mm -hmm. So in your case, Rachel, you decided to combine human design with copywriting because your people yeah. couldn't create, they couldn't communicate clearly so that they could yeah. get clients. Yeah. And you have a very specific way of doing that, that other copywriters don't do. So your signature solution is yeah. to combine human design with copywriting so that they can create mm -hmm. clients through the words that they write. Mm -hmm. And so we start with, again, who we know, you know entrepreneurs, yep. what's the problem, not yep. getting clients, need to learn how to write, whatever. And then what's your process, your signature solution for that problem is human design and copywriting. Mm -hmm. And so then we would figure out like, what are the elements of that solution? It doesn't have to be step by step. It doesn't have to be step one, step two, step three, but what are the elements mm -hmm. of that so that you're clear about that. And then I think for like we were talking about for the managers, if you have different elements of that, each one of those elements could be an offer potentially, mm -hmm. or you can put them into one signature offer. So that's why I said, how do you package it 
Yeah. Another piece of the five P's because you have your overall solution. Like if you were to take your people with this problem from A to Z. Yeah. What would that look like? And then you can decide, am I going to package it into one big everything but the kitchen sink kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to have an offer suite where I do one part and then I Mm -hmm. do another part and then I do another part. So that's really how I would have people think about it because then that way it's not disjointed. I think so many of us get out here into business and we just start offering things rather than figuring out what I want to be known for, who do I want to be? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I see that a lot. And I think we can also package things, the the specifics, the assets that you get are can be different too. Like you could offer the same methodology in a group program with recorded content as you could with one-to-one. It's just, you're going through it one-to-one with somebody, right? Like it just packaged differently, but still the mm. same process. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I was like, I always like to start with the signature solution Yeah. And then we can figure out like, what is your methodology? What is your process? Mm -hmm. What are your pillars? Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. we can decide how we're going to package it up. Yeah. I think sometimes we jump in and say, oh, I have to do one-on-one or, oh, I have to do a group or, oh, I have to do a course. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. If you have your overarching signature solution, we can slice it and dice it and do whatever we want to with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So with this like more simple solution, we when we were talking last time, you we were saying it works up to a certain number point, right? What was that number point, and what like how did you even get to that? Oh yeah, so I love math. <laughs> I love math because it just takes the, like when I said the data versus the drama. It just for me, math is very calming mm-hmm. and. A lot of us, again, when we've been sold this, we got to have bigger and more and all of these things. And I was yeah. like, but wait a minute, if you have a mid to high ticket offer, so like $2,500 offer, which most mm-hmm. of us, if we're solving a very specific problem for people, big enough problem, that's worth that. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, $2,500, that's not that bad. Yeah, Most sure. people can get around, they can get their nervous system behind that. Yeah. So- If you work with 10 clients per quarter or 40 for the year, 10 Mm -hmm. times four is 40 for the year at $2,500, that is, that's six figures. That's a hundred thousand. And so what I find is like, if you start there and what happens with most people, and we even see this in jobs, as you get better at your job, you get raises, you can command, you can command more in terms Mm -hmm. of your salary. And the same thing happens with us. But when we keep switching things up, we can't get good enough to be able to charge more and feel good about it and get the results so that the clients feel good about paying it. And so if we even just decide to just, okay, I'm going to start at $2,500 and I'm going to make a bespoke, I'm going to make a signature, like a bespoke package that is worth that. It feels good to me to charge. It feels good to them. And I'm just going to get really good at delivering that. I'm going to get really good at bringing people into that and selling people. At that point, after you work with a certain number of them, you can decide like, hey, people are getting results faster. They're getting Mm -hmm. better results or what have you. I'm going to give myself a raise. I'm going to make it a little bit because you're able to get them there faster. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you take it up. So at that point, if we're working with 10 clients per quarter, for example, what I've found with my clients is this model works up to about a half a million. Because usually that's when, when you get to like 12,500 times 40 is half a million. At that point, a lot of people decide they don't want to be charging people more than 12,500 or so. Yeah. Yeah. Or that then we're starting to, we're starting to get into the more higher ticket things. And then it's, it's more of a thought process for people to buy into. Mm -hmm. So then the model breaks. Because Mm -hmm. you either have to charge so much that it's a little bit more challenging for you to find those 10 clients a quarter, or you want to go into a little bit more scalable model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to get bigger, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to get bigger (laughs) and let's be clear, there are some coaches that charge tens of thousands of dollars to work with them. 
So yeah. let's not take that off the table either. I'm just thinking about like the law of averages and stuff. Yeah. And that where most people are at. Yeah. It's not right. that it's where not possible, people. but it's where most people are at. Yeah. That totally makes sense. Um, And I love what you said about if you're consistent in like the consistency piece of it, of committing to figuring out what this signature process is. And I think so many people give up before they figure that out and jump ship or try and they get lost in, well, maybe it's this problem instead, or maybe it's this, or it's, it, it looks like it's not working. And most things honestly look like they're not working in the beginning. <laughs> they look like they're not working. <laughs> when you first yeah. launch and you put those emails out, no one signs up. You're like, shit, it's not working. Is it? Is it really not working? Or is it just you need to keep going and taking that next step and keep putting it out there and keep I've I've hard on hand definitely changed my message and my offers. My offers more than my message um a lot and can hundred percent agree that it takes time for people to catch up. It takes time for them to realize that you changed your mind or that you're offering something different or what are you offering? It, there is that rule of People have to see you a certain number of times for the most part. You'll have clients every now and then that like drop in out of this blue off of one thing, but it's it takes time. It takes time repeatedly talking about it. And I think the more that you talk about it, the easier it gets to talk about what you do, the problem that you solve, like it just starts to flow that much easier, but people give up. They give up too easily. Mm. Yeah. And it makes me think of, I always tell the I guess this analogy metaphor, I always get those two words mixed up about a, a pump well for water because uh -huh. my grandma used to have one. And to your point about things looking like they're not working in the beginning, but they actually are, is if you've ever used a pump well before, it's this this pipe that comes out of the ground and it has yep. like crank handle on the back of it and you you're pumping it and at least the one at my grandma's house we would just be out there pumping and pumping and pumping and it's like really loose the handle and it's like nothing working and they just say like, oh i'm just burning up all this energy but nothing's happening there's no water coming out it's supposed yep. to be water coming out and what i used to find was like right before the water was to come out it would actually get harder the pressure mm. and then that's when you give it one more good push and the water would go from a trickle to like start gushing out. And yeah. you could let the hand the, the handle go for a little bit and the water would continue to come out without you pumping anymore. Yeah. And to me, that's one of the best analogies for business. But to, like you said, yeah. people are pumping. They're like, this thing is loose. It's not working. It's nothing. Water, no water's coming out here. Or a little spurt will come out. This thing sucks. And then you're like, oh, well, maybe I should go pump this other pump well over here. And that's exactly what a lot of us do. We quit before we get the fruits of our labor. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 I think another piece to add to this is that um, we jump into things too soon or from a pers like an egoic perspective of, oh, so-and-so is doing that. I want what their result is, but you don't necessarily want to do the work to get there or the way that they've done it is not lying to you, right? And so you jump in, you're like, I want the end result. And then you realize that you're like, oh, shit, this isn't actually how I want my business to look or how I want to get there, or it just doesn't feel right in a lot of different ways. And then you jump ship, too. I think, I mean, I've done that, too, like jumping into something without truly understanding how they got there. I wanted the result, but I didn't understand how they actually got there. Um, and I think this is why I... It feels so important that your unique selling point is so important. It's how you're getting to the result. It's showing people this is how we're going to get there. That way you're getting people that are like sold on the, the way there already and not just on the result. Yeah, 100%. I think a lot of people are finding this out the hard way now. Now mm -hmm. that the dust is settled, the fog is lifted from our eyes and, and yep. it's not like, online and just it's the gold mine there and all you have to do is throw up a landing page and people will throw you money kind of thing and it's like yeah. mm. yeah. so there's a few things that had to happen before that and so you and I were talking about the skills that you need to yeah. to have and I I'm a little bit conflicted about this conversation because I think because I came from the offline world before I went into the online space and even this year some of my clients are getting clients from two 
interactions with people. But if you let the social media gurus and the market gurus tell, it's like 32 impressions right now from a person that doesn't know you to a client. And I and my clients have done this time and time again with yeah. two to three yeah. contacts. But here's the difference. We're having conversations, individual one-on-one conversations, whether in person, on Zoom, uh, not as much the DMs because that that conversation could last forever, but one-on-one on Zoom, <laughs> on the telephone. Yeah. And it doesn't require all of these touches and all of the, like, I got to be the best content creator, the best copywriter because of you as a, as a coach or service provider can really let a person feel your essence. And you can, especially if you're a generator or a managing, you can respond in the moment to what you're sensing that they need, as yeah. opposed to like, I'm just creating in a vacuum and I'm going to put this yeah. post out and I don't know who's, first of all, who's going to see it and who's going to resonate with it. So what would you say the skills are that are like the baseline? You need to know these. What would you say that, from your perspective and your experience? You have to learn how to communicate what you do. Mm -hmm. It whether it's verbal, whether it's written, you you have to learn how to do that. Yeah. And the cool thing about that is, especially if you're having one on one conversations with people, people are a little bit more forgiving when they're on the phone with you or in front of you than when they're trying to read your post or your email. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's so true. Yeah. You can so stumble over your words and get to the point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can, and this is why I love, like people hate to do it and they just want passive income and they just want to be online and just posting the money comes in the DMs. But I'm like, until or unless you learn how to write effectively, communicate mm. effectively, copyright effectively, it just does not happen like that. And yeah. that's why I'm such a big advocate of get in front of people, look at their faces, look at their eyes. Yeah. If you're on a telephone, listen for the pauses, listen for what they don't say. When you're in front of them, you can see when somebody's eyes glazes over, or you can see when they look up, like they don't understand what you just said. And mm. then you can clarify. But if you just wrote a post or if you have a landing page or a sales page, you don't know that they didn't understand. Yeah, yeah. You just see that no one liked or commented and then you start to spiral in your own mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you can't recover from that. But if no. I'm in front of like, if we're having this conversation because I can see Rachel's face and she, I can tell she doesn't understand something, I'm like, oh, let me, let me clarify that. Or let me yeah. ask her a question. Let me not assume. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Just got interrupted. He walked out. It's real life. It's real life. He put that hand up and he's like, oh, shit. He turns around and walks away. Oh. <laughs> I 100% agree. Like we have to, and I want to add to it. I think that we have to find a way to be confident, even if we're confident in that I know I have something that I can give, right? I have something I can give, even if I'm trying to figure out what that is, I'm confident that I'll figure it out. And I think the, I know I really struggled with that and struggling with, um, you, you have to self-anoint yourself in confidence. No one's going to tell you that you're good at this until you decide that you're good at it. I waited a really long time. And you have to show up with like, I know I have something to give. I'm going to have conversations with people until I figure out what that is and learn to just show up with open, right? And not feeling like if I don't get this right, it's the end of the world, right? Mm -hmm. I love the, my mantra is always like, I can't, I can't screw it up. I can't fuck it up. Just keep going. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't fuck it up. You can't so just keep going. Oh, yeah. I yeah no, that. I love that you said the confidence thing, because I think courage comes before confidence. Mm. Like you, you you have to be courageous to take the first step. Yeah. And I was going to say this before, but I was like, that's not a skill, but I'm going to throw it in it there is. since you threw in confidence, ten tenacious, tenacity. Yes. So like you have to be yeah. 
you have to be tenacious. You have to keep taking the steps. You have to keep learning from the, mm -hmm. what happens. I'm not even gonna call it mistakes. You just gotta keep learning from whatever happens yep. so that you can get to the point where you know what to do and how to do it. Because mo by that time, that's when most of us declare ourselves, like people don't even have to declare us as confident. Like we say, oh, we know what we're doing. We know yeah. how to do it. But yeah. you don't get there without the courage to take the first step to say like, yeah. okay, I'm not sure, or I know that I have something to offer and I'm going to give this part that I have to offer. Yeah. And I'm going to try it. And it, it may not turn out how I think, but also I think having our back means, okay, if it doesn't turn out how we think it will, what are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, and put that plan into place. Because again, I just keep going back to a lot of us, we, we sometimes talk about imposter syndrome or whatever, but I think it's really being a person of integrity and we yeah. want our people to get results. And so yeah. it's like, I, my background is in healthcare. I used to be a physical therapist. And so it's like client patients would come to us all the time. And some of them wouldn't get better with the tricks and tools that we had in our tool belt. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Yeah. What is your plan for that? And oftentimes it's conferred with a, with a colleague, mm -hmm. you know, who are your colleagues? You went to class with somebody, <laughs> ask a question, like, let's stop being yeah. so prideful. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. I think once you like that tenacity, that courage is what gets people started in their business. And then what would you say are two or three like hard skills, like hard skills being like messaging um, that would take someone from that beginning stage to pretty consistent and maybe scaling up to that 500K mark of the bespoke business. Like what are the skills that they need in order to get to that point? Um, if your business is not flowing, something's, something's wrong in your marketing, sales, or delivery, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so under marketing, it's your core message and how you get that message out into the world. And I'm not going to say how you have to do it because there's a zillion different ways, but right. at the base is the core message. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who are you working with? How do you help them? Yep. And then how do you choose to spread the word? And the thing that I've been thinking about lately is so many people have been taught these tactics without it being inside of a solid strategy. And mm -hmm. so what do I mean by that? Like a tactic is go do reels. Okay. Well, uh, get the trending reels. Yeah. Okay. But like, who are we talking to in these reels? Like, what is the message of these reels so that it will attract the right person instead of just likes? Because I know people who have lots and lots of followers and no dollars. Yeah. 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 You know, so, and that come to me, that goes down to their core messaging is off usually that, mm -hmm. or because they figured out how to get in front of people or sales. They're not, they don't know how to sell. That is a skill that you must, must, must learn Absolutely. as a business owner. You're not going to make it. So yeah. either, like I said, people don't have the right message is not in front of the right people. They don't know how to sell once the person comes into their world. And, and then we talked a bit before about delivery. You, you yeah. have to figure out how to help people get results. And I think from my background in healthcare, I'm really more into doing assessments with people these days mm -hmm. so that we have some kind of a little bit more objective snapshot of where they are when they start and then periodically through the process. So when we're pumping that handle and it doesn't seem like it's working, we can, yeah. You know that it is. It's working. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like these parts are working and these parts are the levers that you need to pull before you get the result. But sometimes it's just like, man, you want to give up because you, you don't think it's working because you haven't yet seen the end result. But there's so many different things that need to happen before you get there. Like when you're baking a cake, you got to do all this stuff be before the cake happens, you know? Yeah. I love that you mentioned tactics versus strategy. Because, I, and I get why all these tactics are out there because that's like simplifying 
the messaging, right? You're solving a specific problem for someone. So, I mean, I talk about that all the time. You got to solve a specific problem. But it can backfire when you're looking at what everyone else is doing and they're talking about, well, do reels. Here's how to do reels, right? But you're not taking, that's a tactic. And you're not taking that tactic and putting it into a solid strategy of Instagram or whatever, right? Like you're, you think that if I just do reels, I'll have the successful business or I'll have the clients, that kind of thing. And that's not how it works. It's, it's a tactic. You have to put the tactic inside a strategy. And most people don't have any clue what strategy they're doing or give the strategy long enough to work. I mean, I'm guilty of myself, but um, that's, I feel like the thing that has shifted the most in the last six months for me and taken me to a level that's actually consistent now is that I committed to a strategy, not just the tactics, committed to a strategy and followed through on it. Didn't give up on it when it looked like it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And the next layer above that is like making sure that it's rooted in timeless business principles and yes. not just trends. Yeah. So you can yeah. have the Instagram strategy, but going back to something we said earlier, it's like, what game are we playing? Like, are mm -hmm. you even playing the right game? Are you playing the high volume, low ticket game? Or are you yeah. playing the exactly. mid to high ticket, low volume yeah. game? And, yep. and if that's the case, then is that even the right strategy for your overall, what yeah. you're trying to do in your business? Exactly. Yeah. The strategy has to match what type of business you want for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think that any strategy will work. It's what's the right one for you, the business that you want, the goals that you have, the lifestyle that you want, that has to match. The personality yeah. that you the have, personality the strengths, too. the preferences that you have. Yeah. Like, I do not prefer, like, you may see me scroll on my Instagram, Tavana Denise. You will see an occasional reel. You will see an occasional dance. But I, that was in the moment, and that is that is how I felt. Yeah. I wasn't doing it for the grand. Yeah. I was doing it because I felt like it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so you have to really, when you when you think about whatever tactic, strategy, program, service provider that is put in front of you, you have to really like anchor it to what is my goal? What am I trying to do here in my business? Mm -hmm. Anchor it to what is, what is my personality? Like I said, season of ease. Okay. If, if I have to fight too much against my personality, why, why would I do that? You're going to be really crabby. <laughs> You're not going to like it. Yeah, either you're not going to be able to do it or it's going to yeah. burn you out or it's yeah. not going to get results because everybody knows that you're hating it while you're doing it. It's just like, why? Yeah, I am yeah. all for mindset. Change your yeah. mindset. You heard totally. I started out this conversation saying change your mindset. And also, how about we start with an aligned strategy because stuff is still going to come up when yeah. when you are using the even the most aligned strategy. So why don't yeah. we give our put ourselves in the best position to win? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because things do come up even when everything is really aligned, everything feels really good. There's still going to be shit that comes up that you have to navigate. Yeah. 100%. Mm, this has been such a great conversation, Tavana. <laughs> Oh, Look, I got to see one of the charts with our uh, charts are superimposed on top Ooh, of each other. Yeah. I bet you we're, we're, uh, completing a bunch of little circuits because we are. Yeah. We just, whenever it's, we get on the phone, we just talk so much. Oh God. It's so good. It hits on such, I mean, so many facets and yeah, I love it. I love it. Also, thank you, thank you Tavana me. for coming on the BU Bay podcast again. I love having you. Thank you. Love being here. <laughs>